start today it's a it's a bit uh, we took a different twist this year we're gonna actually focus on like topics but we're gonna still take the beginning of the uh, the session to to kind of catch up on what's happening just to let you know um, as you may know my name is Michelin Amar from the Keep Shock Pedagogical and um, welcome to the uh, Science Après Cours um, it's always a bit slow at the beginning of the year but hopefully you'll see the numbers gonna come up soon um we're trying a new formula this year we're trying to make meetings partly with uh, a, a purpose like a more like a not a purpose like we always had purpose of course but this one with more like of a sharing information so we'll have a double double uh double uh benefit if you want so uh let me start we're lucky enough to start off that we have barbara with us today who happens to uh, be a representative uh, for from bim and i think barbara has a lot of good stuff for us this year right <laughs> so i'll let you introduce yourself hi ladies uh, and Richard. <laughs> i um we say so i don't really have any specific news although you know that the they're going to the ministry is going to be changing the DDs or adjusting them and when they do that then we'll have to adjust all the exams because they're going to be changing the rubric they're going to be changing the um the verification or the checklist that we do so once they've done that then they're going to give it to us and then we'll have to change our versions bcd we'll start with one so um but that's i don't have any more news when it's going to be super <laughs> Is, uh, it should be in the fall. It was supposed to be last year, but now we're looking at this fall. So I'm waiting to hear the news. So that's it. Um, I don't have any news about any new exams um, that's on the horizon. Uh, so we're just, we're working on doing this, what they call the remaniement, like they did in math, uh, adjusting the exams. So that's all the news I have for now. Hopefully I'll have more news later. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara, so much. And to add a little news for you guys, we have a team of biology that last year worked on the bio, the 5070 and 5071, and version A was put on Mahara for circulation. We're lucky enough that last year, I think Jessica here will uh, kind of confirm the state of our version B. Version B is mostly ready, if I'm not mistaken. So Jessica, let me see, give you the... Uh, the floor to give us an update sure why not <laughs> so <laughs> blg 5070 version a was done last year version b is also finished so that include the, the the exams the answer key the rubrics and the checklist and i also have a pretest that follow the same format as the exam also done for BLG 5070 and 5071, I think the version B is coming out soon. I think they're just finalizing the rubric and checklist. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jess. So just to let you know, hopefully we're not going to give a date specific because that's it. The five, you know, teachers are doing this on their own time. Uh, and uh, in combination with their workload. So uh, thanks to this wonderful group, we're able to have version B fi almost finished. We have, like Jessica said, only like the last part of 5071, if I'm not mistaken, right? 71 or 70, 71, if I'm not mistaken, just the checklist and the rubric ready. So, and it will be put also be published on Mahara for everyone to use. Uh, just to remind also for version A, there was a bit of an adjustment. So we will be re like putting a version, the way we we're going to do, we always leave the original, but we're going to put version one, version two, version three, just with the changes. The changes of version eight are minute, but they're there regardless for somebody who wants to see what was changed. So based on very popular demand and reoccurring customers like teachers. So we had some feedbacks and now our versions seems to be solid and on the french side also they've been using our version a it got translated and they're desperately waiting for version b i know they were working on a version c the french side also so they will share it with us we'll translate it because you know i'm in close uh, contact with the french uh, cps that uh, that works on those uh, those uh, those exams so we share they share back so uh, hopefully we'll get another 
another version, but we'll be waiting on that one. And hopefully BIM will surprise us soon enough with the version D. So like that, at least this course will be completely, well, they'll be their first, they'll be version A for them, but for us will be a version D, a fourth version. So yeah, and uh, for, just to remember uh, biology uh, sec five, it's uh, considered to be um, an option course, a science option course. So there's no prerequisite to taking it. But, but that being said, as good practitioners who taught it, like, for example, Jessica is part of a four or five teacher teams that taught it, tested it, and got feedback on this course. Uh, it requires a minimum skills. So if we want success of our students in this course, it's not a bobo course, like we say. It's not because it's option, it's a bobo course. It's still science courses. So they still need to be uh, fluent a little bit in uh, at least sec four. English, correct me, Jessica, sec four, sec three English at least? I think we're aiming for a minimum sec four, maybe even sec five English, just because there's quite a bit of reading and a lot of you know, very long terms that they need to memorize. So it'll be easier if their reading comprehension is very strong. That, that this is these are these are courses for some for people who are interested to go into let's say nursing or any science program or even just for fun we had students who took those courses for fun um but it's just to let you know bio five uh, is um i think if i'm not mistaken for some of our colleagues in get you know we know some university and some other uh, some other i think um institution could require it for as a prerequisite for um for uh actually some of their courses so they could be used as a as a as a credited course so that's why a lot of our our certain schools are offering it for our students because how can i say some schools may credit this course so it's still an, an a nice course to to offer but again just to make sure i mean anyone could take it technically but we recommend for the bio sec five at least a, a, a little a, a minimum level of, of literacy would help the students go a long way just to let you know and and just also i would like to announce uh, that we will have uh, uh training uh lab training and mechanization training certification for anybody who's who who's interested teachers uh, or cps who'd like to invite teachers on uh, in, uh, there'll be two sessions there'll be uh, two sessions held this year one in november and one in january so if you're interested please send me an email or send your cp an email uh, and hopefully we'll be able to register you for the upcoming session for certification okay um these are the big news again just to go back there'll be some ded changes we had spoken to monsieur adrioli who's the mec uh, uh, rep and he said there'll be some stuff coming down but this year seems to be a big the big wave is francisation uh, that is taking everybody by storm but in terms of science and math there will be some changes in the ded like like barbara mentioned and uh, there'll be few changes but i think they'll all the changes will be staggered so that being said, uh, we're looking forward to have a, a smoother year, <laughs> a bit of a smoother year comparatively to any year that is rock and roll, you know, in science and math. So that being said, um, welcome everybody. And uh, let me share with you part one of three parts of collective marking. And again, the background for that is that we've been receiving a lot of demand from CPs and teachers that they're having difficulty. Some, some have difficulty correcting, figuring it out. Some would like to share that experience with others so they could validate their correction method. Some, they feel like they're a bit alone in this. So we decided for the, well, these requests came to us for the past two, three years. And we, we decided in, um, in parallel with the language and the social sciences to create collective marking in disciplines, in specific disciplines, so we could get teachers within the same discipline to meet up and maybe share these experience. But of course, we don't assume everybody's proficient. So we're gonna start all from zero saying, where do we find these documents, what they contain these documents and start building them up. 
and all this uh, this today's video is registered so you could for all your teachers who would like to watch this and are not able to be here today please refer them to this uh, so we'll only help them um, uh, catch up for the next sessions so uh, but please interrupt me anytime and we're so privileged to have uh, Barbara with us so Barbara please interrupt me at any time and correct me Barbara is the representative of BIMS. He is the expert in evaluation. So uh, please step in whenever you, you feel uh, you would like to add anything. So welcome everybody um, to collective marking training session part one. Today, mainly uh, our intention is we're getting people together because we think collective marking is a process uh, where educators um, reach a common understanding of their evaluation tools. All these evaluation tools are given by the ministry and by uh, by by interested side to help us to develop a common means of interpreting students' work. So we all be as fair as possible to to kind of uh, to be as fair as possible across. It is also through this process that subject level teams can put together collective marking session where everyone's input is directly towards student success. The point at the end of the day is to make sure that we're all uh, correcting, not the same way, but to be fair to our students, to give them the best, a common understanding what's what's the best, the fairest grade possible. So today for part one, we're gonna look at uh, programs and DEDs and also talk about examination breakdown of evaluation rubric C1, C2, C3. So to start first, I don't know if anybody, if, if everybody's familiar where we get the programs. I have here two sites. If we take a look at these sites, um, just to, uh, this is the ministerial site where you could have access to all the sciences um, program and their DEDs. Uh, the DEDs is a document that is provided. I'm gonna put it, uh, in the chat, if you don't give me a second. So everybody could, if you wanna take a look at it, you could take a look at it. Um, there we go. So this is a site where you have access to your program to the DED. DED is a document that, sh that describes what's the steps, um, well, anything that deals with evaluation, okay? And we're gonna go through them. And of course, all these DEDs are separated by discipline. So for today's purpose, for today's purpose, I'm gonna take, uh, I, we just picked a random uh, course, a TSC 4061, which is the electricity course. Um, and we're gonna go through it. So looking at this, of course, when we're looking at competency, when we're looking at competency one, two, and three, uh, these are the distinctive uh, competency that the students are evaluated on. Uh, notice that we have uh, competency three is not evaluated by itself. It's usually integrated in competency one with competency one and it's integrated in competency two. So technically we're being evaluated, we're evaluating the student in competency one and three and evaluating the student on competency two and three. Notice over here, when we're talking about key features, these are the, the, the features uh, that the competency refers to, but there's also what we call manifestation. Manifestation is what we call a bigger, uh, a, a, a more detail on how these competency gets evaluated. And if you go through the program and refer to Appendix 4, there's a lot more detail on when we're talking about competency one. Notice that all the this is all what is expected to, um, to be evaluated in competency one, the competency two and competency three. Of course, we're not gonna go through this. This is within your documents you could access and again, evaluate. Um, when we're looking at any science and technology course, of course, there's a title and in the title that tells you the three first letter is the level. Uh, what's the course, the title course, like in this case, technology, science, um, and the C4, common core, if I'm not missing, right? Anyways, 4061 is the course code and the two here is the credit. And you'll see why it's important to, to know what, how many credit it is. Of course, you have here the title of the of the the module. In term of credit, uh, by the government's mean, they say for every credit, it's technically supposed to take twenty five hours. But we all know science courses. Uh, this is an indication of a minimum amount of 
of, of hours. There's no science course that's usually done within those minimum hours, unless you have a, a superstar student. And of course, here you'll have the general concept that you get from uh, your uh, program. Now, let's take a look in weighing evaluation. So when we're looking at competency evaluation, we're looking at, um, of course, the framework of evaluation learning in general education in comparison to the youth sector. We're trying to, the government trying to have them as parallel as possible. So C1 and C3, we're looking at 40%. C1 and C3, we're looking at the laboratory component. And C2 and C C3, we're looking at the theory component which is the, the C2, C3 is actually broken down into two components, the 40%, which is the learning situation, and you have the 20%, which is the explicit knowledge. So the theory component is, a, is, is worth 60%, and the laboratory component is worth 40%. But what's really, really interesting is in the program it's written here, which I love the sentence, Adult learners must be made aware of the evaluation criteria used to evaluate them and the corresponding weighting of each criterion. The students have to know what they're being evaluated on and, 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 and the rubric, by the way, the rubrics are public. So we should be able to provide them the rubrics from day one. So now coming back again to the program, what's interesting in the program is they also provide us with um, with um, with strategy, teaching strategy. So knowing over here, like if we take a look at Appendix 1, we're provided with strategies, exploration and analytical strategies. So this is looking more at the theoretical component of the, of the course. And in Appendix 2, we're looking, Appendix 2 and 3 usually, they're looking at actually the practical component of the course, where here they actually go into more examples and if you take a look at Appendix 3, which I did not put here, is actually showing you how do you develop a hypothesis? How do you? So they are giving you a lot of information to guide the teacher on what and how to go about doing things. Now, in terms of broad area of learnings, of course, these these has to, these curriculums have to touch real like it falls into real life problems, right? Real life uh, situation. So this is where the banks of learning situation come from, from health and well-being, career planning, entrepreneurship. And of course, um, there's two areas of situation where we're looking at research areas and expertise. And we'll look into those in a bit to show you what's the difference between both of them. Again, if you take a look at the program, you'll be able to find the competency and what the category of knowledge that they'll be evaluated on, the general knowledge, uh, and of course the techniques when we're looking at labs, what kind of techniques these students are being evaluated on. Now, this is the fun part for any teachers to know and any students actually for that matter, is to know that any exams for science has two components. And uh, the two components have, a, the, the full exam has a total duration of 240. But again, this number varies depending on the exam. Some exams are three hours, some exams are two hours, so depends on, on which exam is, is we're looking at. In terms of a practical part for the 4061, we're looking again at evaluating competency one and three. And those laboratory exam typically are supposed to be 120 minutes. In terms of the theory part, and the explicit and the explicit uh, um, the theory part and the knowledge part, we're looking again at 120 minutes, and it's up to the students to actually manage their time. And do not forget that the laboratory component has to be evaluated in a laboratory setting. Again, laboratory setting, it varies. It just needs the, the minimum requirement tools for this lab to be safely conducted. It doesn't have to be a machine shop, but it has to have all the tools possible for the laboratory to be safely conducted. And uh, again, here, if you take a look in the program, they go into more deeper, um, into more detail in terms of the practical part with criteria is being evaluated. What's the topic? What's the uh, what's the topic that they'll be tackling into uh, these evaluation? The same thing is done in the theory part. Now, this is the fun part when we're looking at the evaluation criteria, obviously notice over here, we have seven of them. 
And uh, I, I chose two different colors, mainly just to go back and to relate the practical part and the theory part to the practical part and the theory part. So notice from 1.1 to 1.4, uh, we're looking more at the competency one versus competency two. And uh, some will be used for the, uh, for the uh, laboratory component versus the other one, we're looking for the theoretical component. For those, and those can be used from day one. Now, uh, again, these are all information, nothing's new. Everything here is in these documents, either in the DED or in the program. So again, the, the, the weight devaluation the competency is meant, notice the first box on top. Again, going back over, you have practical theory and explicit evaluation. The explicit evaluation is just what we know as objective learning. It's combined with the theory part, that's the 20% that is just short answers and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, long answer questions that is not situational just a recall or a small calculation in term that is sound the interesting part is the authorized material uh for both parts the standard uh the the, the standard symbol the list of formulas additional black sheet and an ordinary or scientific calculator should be given to the students from day one and those in terms of like symbols and formula, I recommend you give them what's on the exam because these are public, they're public, um, they're public documents. So the student should have the formula sheet from day one and should use it through its learning. The student should not show up at the exam as the first time and look at this formula and say, what is this? Then there you already set them back, you throw them off. So, Formula sheet symbols that are used in exam can be given to students from day one for their learning. In terms of calculators, of course, make sure that it's not programmable. In terms of the practical part of the examination, the practical part of the examination, the laboratory equipment should be available to the student the three hours or the two hours that they're doing their lab. Okay. Um, and of course, computers, if necessary. And when we're talking about computers, we're talking about computers that's not connected to anything. A computer that's a dummy computer, they call. Now, there's a component here that we, we well, I'm going to mention, but it, uh, and we received the, also, I think, a full sanction for it dictionaries. Dictionaries from mother tongue of the users to English is allowed, you know, but not English to English. So we agree we're not looking up a definition, we're trying to understand the word. And that is, if I'm not mistaken, I could give you the, the sanction number, uh, info sanction uh, that came up. In terms of adaptation for exams, that I will be bringing in uh, an orthopedagogue or Karin Jacques who would actually know more about what's the rights, uh, the rights of the students in terms of adaptation uh, on exams. Okay, so I'm not going to venture there because there's a lot of if and don't and maybe I'll bring the specialist, an expert in that, that will talk to it more. And by the way, just to let you know, Madame Paris, who's the MEC uh, representative and Monsieur Dostaler, both for the math and science, they would want, they want, they, they asked me if they could come and meet the English and the, uh, well, the non-French community, I guess, let's keep it simple like that, uh, to to meet everybody and to 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 hear from everybody. So. Eventually, I will be inviting them to come and meet all of us, all of you. Again, in terms of assessment tool, uh, our rubrics and our beautiful checklist, um, again, have there's many ways of, of correcting with those, and we're going to get to those when we're going to get our hand dirty, like we say, and uh, better understand them. In terms of a passing mark, all you need is a 60 uh, in the exam as a whole. Uh, that means what? Okay, extreme case scenario, and I had a teacher in the past ask me, well, if 60% is the theory and 40% the practical, if somebody got 100% on the theory, should they do the practical? In theory, no, because they passed the course. But why would they do it? And ethically, for any science teacher, they know the practical is as important as the theoretical, because, I mean, it doesn't make sense. But it's a whole, it's the mark of the whole exam of both components that has to be 60. It's not 16 either or. 
it's together. And in terms of retake, uh, the adult, he could take each part. So if let's say that the, the, the adult failed only the theory, but passed the practical, so they could just redo the theory. They don't have to redo both exams. So it's either or if whatever they pass, they pass, whatever they didn't pass, they could retake it. And if let's say they took a version A for, for the exam and they failed, let's say the practical of version A, they could do the practical of version B. But again, that's just one component of both. But if they fail both, they have to redo a different exam altogether. They can redo the same exam. And again, make sure that you keep tab of the versions so there will be a rotation of the version. The students prepare to all exams, not to a version of an exam, just to make sure. Now, what's, what's really interesting in the program, we get to see this section that a lot of teachers kind of oversee or don't get to actually extract is they do tell you by the end of this course, the adult learner will be able to. And notice all the list of information that they should be able to. So this is what we're thriving, we're preparing the student to be able to. And I specifically I specifically highlighted the, the, the verbs to show you if you actually connect them to the rubrics is similar, is in within the same, tone. So they're actually all on the higher thinking kind of um, uh, action. So like design, model, determine, analyze, produce. These are what they're being evaluated. And this is the rubric. If you take a look at the root, that's what they're being actually uh, measured their success on. So this could be like a, just a component for, for like a, a little hint for the teachers to kind of Keep in mind if you want to reuse the same verbs so that will be will not be for or like you know uh, foreign to the students these are common verbs that come around often in exams so um now we come to the correction like what's available to the teachers so notice over here you have the theory part you have this is the the front page of the situational and you have the practical box. this is also the uh, the the front page of the practical part and notice we have an adult learner result sheet where it's actually the combination of both marks actually with the explicit evaluation knowledge together all of them they add up to 100 percent these page this is a page that you could show the student that's the only page that you could show the students with feedback and comments so they can improve they cannot see their exams they cannot see the questionnaire they cannot see anything but this page you could show them like you give them the mark and you can give them some comments so you could show this part good i uh, i just have a quick question i i was wondering uh where could you find the list of uh formulas the list of formulas most uh they're usually published in the program uh, okay okay they're always in the appendix the last pages like if of every program there is a list of formulas okay and I know I had spoken to Madame Paris, and I'll come back to you with a confirmation 100% on if they're not there, most of them are there, and if they're not there, can we take them from the exam? I will not tell you yes or no now, but I will confirm it with her. Um, and just, I, yeah. yeah, just because in the past I've noticed that some, some like, they'll give you the basic formulas, but they won't, like, I, I'm, I just want to make sure I understand what formulas they're going to give because sometimes I adapt the, the formulas adapted so that the student can easily be able to apply the formulas and so uh, and so I just want to sometimes they're not there and I'm like okay let's let's work elsewhere on those but anyway sorry sorry thank you for that no 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 that this is this is perfect surely this is the questions that i'm looking for because you see the questions i cannot answer i actually have someone that could answer them for me okay. you know what i mean and i yeah. can get the, i can get an answer so if you're thinking about it others are thinking about it um uh personally from a conversation with with uh, madame paris usually these these form uh, these uh, formula sheets should be used in learning in the learning from day one okay. so therefore when they get to the end and they see the exams they're not they're not scared what is this or this variable because every every teacher learn differently they come from different schools right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. x and a and table means the same but depends on what you taught in class right if i taught yeah. always with an x suddenly in my in my formula sheet there's an a and they're yeah. like the students completely lost yeah. right so if we use the formula sheet from day one mm -hmm. so at least you know what i mean yeah it's one challenge less 
for the yeah, students for sure. so they will not and the same thing for symbols okay. like you know, yeah. they're not gonna like i know some and and this is a perfect way also to check if a formula sheet or a symbol sheet is missing things so it could give us feedback and we can bring it up anything ministerial exam cannot be touched or changed without them you know obviously yeah, you know yeah. sanction whatever but if we have enough feedback saying well this is missing this is missing from many people things do change things okay. do change like the dictionary it was absolutely a no before now the the, the info sanction came around and like okay yeah we we see there's a huge need for that we want to help those students too right yeah so please if if your teachers use those those formula sheet from day one and they see there's some formula missing please let me know or we could write right away to the mac and say listen madame paris can we add this formula on mm -hmm. the next publication okay okay you great know, sometimes that happens. thank you okay. now this is the part that i find super interesting again evaluation criteria if you want to summarize it the first part is used for, for the practical component. The second part is used for the theoretical component. That's really what it comes down to. And you'll see them over and over in every um, in every rubric. And what I did is I did like almost like a, a little summary sheet for all the sciences of four. Of course, if this is something of interest that you guys would like, I will build it also for the fives. So, um, uh, so in this synthesis specification for evaluation, what I did is I said prior to the exam, that component is really, really important. It's not written in the program, but this is more as a best practice. Uh, prior to the exam, the student must be able to solve learning situation other than the pretest. Let's use the pretest as a pretest, not as a learning situation. And I've seen it often teachers just give pretests as practice. And that's why they run out of pretests. And that's why I get so many requests for pretests because, you know, they're using it, not it's for its purpose, right? Um, the student must be, um, must be able to have manipulated and experiment with, well, here in this case happens to be circuit and laboratory equipment in laboratory settings prior to the lab evaluation and pretest. Labs are mandatory. It's 40% of the grade. It should be 40% of the time. I know this is not something a lot of people are comfortable with or are willing to do, but this is a very, very good practice because a lot of the careers that, that comes out of this, especially if the, you see vocational or CGEP, in CGEP there's courses on laboratory practice. And in CGEP, depending if it's a career, hands-on. So uh, it's a very, very important, I cannot underline that, practice enough and we're even how we because of the request of a lot of teachers who are not who are not let's say science teachers uh, or do not have the science background there's a um, there's a video uh, there's a library there's a science lab video library that's being put together to help them out so they'll be having a little experiment that's our film that the teacher could watch that the student could watch at least to be familiar of what you know, to even ground, to give the information, the same information to everybody across the province. Okay, so that is something that we had developed. So that could be it for your use, and we're slowly developing it. Fifty nine is already available for everybody. Sixty will be published super very very soon, but not ministerial super real super. I'm sorry, that's a joke. <laughs> um, secondly, uh, the student must be uh, aware of the evaluation criteria and the rubric. They will be evaluated with from the beginning of the course. So from day one, the teacher should take the time to say, listen, this is what your evaluation would be depending on. We're gonna take our time to actually use it while we're practicing our learning situation. So the students will be familiar with how, you know, they're gonna be evaluated. Um, the other thing is formula and symbol sheet must be used throughout the learning process. Again, from the beginning. So again, we wanna reduce the challenges and the surprises to the students so they could be successful. Now, if we take a look again, in terms of a summary, uh, the breakdown of the examination, there's a part one and a part two. There's a theoretical component. There's a laboratory component. The theory components is worth 60%. The laboratory component is worth 40%. And these are the details. Again, in this case here, we know uh, the 
part one, 4 to 40, 61 happens to be 120 minutes. So is part two. And I know for some accommodation, we may have added a third of the time. But again, accommodation for exam, we'll probably get somebody who's more knowledgeable for those to, to help us out with in the future. Super. And in terms of authorized material, again, this is all written in the program. Um, again, a notice and note, I, I put down here comment that struck me when I was reading the program that would be really relevant for teachers. The two part administered during different examination sessions. So that means you don't do the lab and the theory in the same time or the same day. It's too much. You could use them on two different days. Um, the theory and explicit has to be done in the same session. The labs, uh, the lab exam has to be done in the same session. So two solid sessions could be on different days. Um, the laboratory uh, component must be uh, completed within the allocated time. So it's not you take it home or like we'll do it later. No, it's within the time. Um, there's no order to the exams. Okay, so you could do theory first or you could do practical first. That is up to the teacher and up to the readiness of the students. So there's nothing that says you have to do theory first and you have to do lab second. It's either or whatever order you would like. Um, the passing grade is 60 for the whole course, for the whole examination period. And you could do retake for part one or part two or both separately or as a whole. Again, they're allowed to have retakes. Now, when do we do re retakes? How do we re redo retakes? This is all a local administered rules. Okay, there's no, uh, there's no, it's not written anywhere that they have to be done a certain way. That is up to the internal regulation of the school. Okay, every school is different. Some schools, they wait a week in between retakes. <clears throat> Some schools, not. Some schools require a month. So this is an internal thing. And um, finally, I just want to share with you also, this is a document. I've done the same exercise for all the SEC4 sciences. I just want to go over a few things. You have the 40, 4059 and the 4060. There, I just want to make a clarification. These are level four courses that are thought in secondary three, but they're actually level four courses. For anybody who is not, they, it doesn't have any um, proof of success of sciences in secondary three uh, in high school, they have to do it in, in adult ed. So if there's no proof of success of secondary three sciences, they have to do that in adult ed. <clears throat> Otherwise, they could just go up to secondary four, to the regular one, the, the 61, the 62, and the 63 and 64. The 61 and the 62 are mandatory for graduation. The 63 and the 64 are optional science courses, but are prerequisite for the SEC five sciences. So for physics, chemistry, you need to do the 63 and the 64. So, sorry, so Micheline, I, I have a quick question. Go ahead. Uh, so you're saying, for us, when we look at sciences, we don't necessarily offer any science courses to our adult ed, but we do offer uh, computer courses, and we've been using those as part of the science courses for graduation. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Because then, remember, we're talking about people who are wants to take sciences, like specific, like sciences. The sixty-one and the sixty-two are the mandatory courses, but they can be replaced with computers or math okay. classes. Okay. But if you're planning on just having sciences part of your um, curriculum to graduate, the 61 and the 62 are the mandatory ones. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> but that being said, if you're not planning on going into science, into CJAP or anywhere else, and you want to switch them off with computers and and uh, and math, go ahead. No okay. More, you know what I mean? Okay. Great. Okay. Thank but, you. No problem. But for 63 and 64, these are prerequisite for chemistry and physics. Those uh, and 63 for, for for physics and 64 for chemistry. Now, can you do 60? I know I got the question in the previous <coughs> conversation. Can you do 64 and do chemistry and not do physics? 
I don't know how to answer that one <laughs> because uh, you know uh, it's very creative as as questions. And yes, if you want to make your life hard, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> But ideally, finish the four before you get to. But I know some centers don't offer 63 because it requires some machine shop, you know. But 63, I know some centers also do not require a full machine shop to do. I had given for, um, like, I given some training to many centers who do not have a machine shop. Just with a toolbox, you could do everything for 63. But you need a bit of a drill. And maybe if you want a handsaw, which is very bad, or a jigsaw, you know, but really a minimum amount of tools, you could do 63 anywhere, you know, and actually some teachers feel 63 is easier than 60. I don't agree. I think it's just a continuation. I think a 63 course, a 60 course lead to 63 smoothly, nicely to, um, oh my God, I lost my voice. Look at that. <laughs> I talked too much all day today. So uh, if you have any centers that would like to implement <clears throat> the courses like the 4060 and the 4063, more than welcome to contact me. I can work with you and help you implement those courses, the mechanization courses. If you need help for the 59 and the 60, you're more than welcome to call me also to help you implement those courses. By the way, there was an agreement that the 40, 59 and the 4060 um, if students take them, they give them optional courses, credit. So they're not a waste. That was the deal between the, um, <clears throat> between proceed and actually the government. So for 59 and 60, a lot of centers are offering them to ease students into sciences and to actually, especially there's a lot of trades that require sciences. And these are really, really nice applied courses that are very relevant to the student's life. Like if you take a look at 59, we're talking about food and uh, skeleton systems. So they're mixing the biology and the chemistry nicely together. And the exams are really sweet. Like they're really, really nice courses. The 60, we're talking about basic, basic carpentry, like basic, like how to, to, to just cut, measure, you know, something that these are courses I find personally that they're very student friendly for someone who never did sciences before. And they're very relevant. They're very fun courses. They're not heavy comparatively to the higher sciences. Again, it takes a couple of runs for the teachers to get comfortable with them. But um, if you have somebody who, who has this, this hands on approach, who loves like the applied sciences, these are fun, fun courses to start any sciences, uh, actually to keep engagement in, in schools. We've seen it when we went to visit uh, up north the uh, CSSLT school boards. We had in incorporated those courses and students were watching what was happening more than what they were doing. And they wanted just to go and do these labs because they had to build birdhouses and flower boxes. And they were like trying to do those fun stuff. They did not want to do math anymore. They just wanted to do go and build stuff. So these courses brought a lot of, especially young boys. I don't like to segregate boys or girls, but especially our hardest clients, especially boys who cannot sit still for, for too long. They need these courses where you need to touch and pull and cut and, and move and, and talk and make a mess, you know, and still learn. So these, these are, these are, these are courses, these are feedbacks that we got from some school, small, small schools to retain some difficult students who did not want to come to school, but they would give them a class like that where, you know, we just go to the machine shop and just do a project. But while you're doing a project, you're actually measuring, calculating and learning. So that's my spiel on this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you need any help in any of these science courses, let me know. Um, in terms of exams, please check, update your exam bank. I know some school boards have one person responsible for sanction. Just make sure you always have the most updated exams. Uh, some school boards we've seen where they're still working on 2010 exams. So please <laughs> double check 
and um, we will be sending off newsletters and we'll try to keep up with BIM. If there's any revision, we'll be keeping up with them. There's a list at the end of our newsletter. There's a reference list that we try to keep up with the most recent changes in terms of the ministry exams, anything that we get, we will say, <laughs> please check the most recent version or our new exam came in. We can put the exam, obviously, as you may know. Any new info sanction, we'll try to put in the numbers, not uh, in, in the newsletter. So we're trying to keep up, you know, abreast to help everybody because not every center have a consultant or have access to this kind of communication. So we try to to keep you up. And um, we're lucky we have Barbara, who's like always bringing us the news <laughs> from BIM, anything new and anything uh, uh, updated. So um, that's it. If you have any questions, I'm here. If you don't. Thank you for attending. It's really appreciated. Share the information. <laughs>